Welcome back to this class on textile finishing. So, let us see what we have covered till now. If you look at uh, the past few weeks, we had done chemistry of water repellents, which meant waxes, stearate based compounds and silicon based compounds. Also, we tried to learn as to how water repellency can be evaluated. Okay. So, let us go further and see what we are going to do. We also learnt on the way that there is something common between water repellency and softening and the common part was that both are spin finish surface finishes, both are surface finishes. They reduce friction and in other case we reduce surface energy which is requirement, but hydrophobicity can be achieved by long chain fatty compounds. Also, it can be achieved by uh, silicon based compounds in which polydimethyl siloxane is one of the compounds. So, that is how we achieved water repellency. So, we are going to be talking today on another product uh, which is called waterproof breathable textiles. Now, these are high performance textiles and would combine the characteristics of the two products just before we learnt about. So, let us just recall again how did we let us say produce a waterproof textile. The procedure mainly was that you wanted to close the interstices of a fabric and this was done normally is done by coating a polymer layer or you can laminate also. So, that is the process. So, you close everything so that nothing can penetrate and so resistance to penetration of water is increased. So, characterization as far as the uh, characteristics are concerned, the resistance to penetration of water is increased many folds and that is what was expected in a waterproof textile. The advantage obviously, you are safe, water cannot penetrate examples like raincoats and other such type of materials could be used, produced to save you from getting wet. The limitation was that these materials not only did increase the resistance to penetration of water, but also they became impermeable to air what also meant was that there were no pores left. And so, what we had a situation or what we have a situation is that the comfort level are low. Why? Because we are producing continuously by way of perspiration moisture vapor and if it condenses and cannot pass through, comfort level goes down. Normally, when we say we are comfortable, what it means is whatever heat we produce because of active uh, routine or even passive routine, the heat generated as well as the moisture generated gets out of the textile very easily and therefore, we say we are comfortable. So, what it actually means is that you should not feel that you are wearing something, but if you wear a waterproof textile, it will be pretty difficult for you to remain uh, very comfortable, let us say after 15 20 minutes of continuous use. Of course, 
the external temperatures will also play some role. So, some of the benchmarks roughly a benchmark could be that you may require you know as we remember that the water head in millimeter that a fabric can support before it leaks right. So, one expects a waterproof material where there is hardly any pressure expected uh, a light rain very dry snow or something like that. So, you may have less than 5000 uh, mm of water head and but if you have some pressure because more rain is there uh, or the water gets collected in some uh, trough which is a fabric trough then you may require in the range which is 5000 to 10000 range uh, if you have light pressure but moderate rain instead of a light rain then you may require little more if some pressure is expected which is heavy enough heavy rain or wet snow then you will be in the range of 15000 to 20000 okay and very high pressure situation very heavy rain very wet snow for a waterproof fabric to be successful you expect even this much rating so you can appreciate this is highly closed it resists so much so obviously in some sense we can say it does not breathe because air cannot pass through water vapor also cannot pass through. On the other hand if we recall what did we do uh, when we produced water repellent fabrics what did we do we made the surfaces the surface of the fabric a low energy surface that became a water repellent. So, main characteristics are that if you put a water drop it will roll off that is repellency, but it does not offer you any significant resistance to penetration of water. So, if it is a light rain very very light drizzle it is fine, but if you actually expect heavy rain then the water will go through. But on the other hand if you keep wearing them the moisture because it is permeable to air therefore, it is permeable to moisture vapor therefore, the comfort levels are going to be high. So, that is the advantage that you will get the comfort levels in water repellent fabrics are going to be high okay? that is an advantage. And of course, limitation is that the water can pass through whenever there is heavy downpour in any of situations it cannot obviously resist the purpose is very different. And of course, we do not do any coating here it is only surface treatment changing the surface energy and what are we doing reducing the surface energy. reducing the surface energy. Now, let us say we want something different and what is the difference? So, we say we want to combine obviously comfort we want everything that we wear should be comfortable what mean it should be able to transport any moisture that we generate. So, these are the physiological phenomena which will obviously happen any time that you wear and work. We would want waterproofness, we want water repellency and comfort. Now, comfort becomes important which means that something must happen that the water vapor must pass through contradictory waterproofness 
as penetration resistance to water has increased tremendously. Here you want vapor to pass through and there was no air permeability. So, these are contradictory requirements, repellency obviously is something which you want, anything which follows on rolls off the surface will be very nice. That brings us to the topic that we will spend some time today uh, called the waterproof breathable textiles. So, waterproof breathable textile, what do we expect? Must perform at high water head, that is the pressure at high pressures and still it should be comfortable to wear and if you can do this and which we will see how it can be done, then they will be in the category of high performance textiles. So, they are special uh, fabrics which will be used by at, at, at special conditions also. And uh, it is understood that these products are going to be costly because the process is going to be slightly more complex and that is the reason why there are very few players who make these fabrics and then the products thereof and the need is quite a lot. Who needs? Anyone who is there in extreme cold weather where you have to keep wearing the garments, extreme cold, you are looking at let us say minus 20 degrees centigrade, minus 40 degrees centigrade, so that is an extreme cold. So, normal clothing may not work for you. High altitude that also becomes very cold, deep under water if you want to work or very active sports wear uh, and, and, and conditions which are external conditions may be cold or otherwise these are interesting and important uh, type of garment which will be required. For example, in Siachen what people they have to stay, the soldiers have to stay for a long, long period in the same place. So you require extreme cold uh, you know weather clothing and that is high altitude as well. So, special requirements for either sports people those who ski on the mountain ranges and any other sport which requires active work, physique, physical exercises and therefore a lot of moisture is going to be produced and you still want to be safe. There we require what we now know is waterproof breathable textiles. We digress a bit from this just to understand a very important polymer which is called Teflon. Have you heard of this name Teflon? Of course, you must have. This is polytetrafluoroethylene polymer, okay. So, it is a fluoropolymer. So, fluorine is there. So, otherwise normally we had our uh, compound which is polyethylene for example, we are there, there were hydrocarbons and then this is a fluorocarbon in some sense, okay. So, this is a very interesting product you may be, you may have used also at some stage or the other. A representation where you can be less, so you can see it is a fluoropolymer. Instead of hydrogen, you all, all, all the time have which was let us say in the case of polyethylene you had this type of a structure which now is all hydrogens are replaced by fluorine. So, it is a very interesting polymer and, uh, and very useful in many industrial applications. What it is known for? So, one of the things which you may have said, these are the Teflon coated utensils for example, they are used everywhere. That is one important thing where say non-stick type of appliances where 
uh, this compound could be used or is being used. It is available in the films form or in tape form, sometimes electrical insulation that you do, it can be done by this. Many a times when the plumbing is done, you fix one pipe over another socket. So you wrap it around a polythene, poly tetrafluoroethylene tape and then tighten it so it becomes. Uh, so it's, it's very useful compound from that point of view. So you have some interesting applications. As we said, nonstick utensils are something which people are quite well aware of. What are the general characteristics? Very high flexural strength even at low temperatures. And now this is important. You know, you're not talking about room temperature, it's very flexible. But at minus 30, minus 40 also, it could be very flexible. It's got high electrical resistance and dielectric constant. So from electrical properties, it can be very interesting from as an insulation material. It's got high water repellency. That's why you had this Teflon coated utensils and it is because of the high electro negativity of the fluorine. So compared to let's say the hydrogen which was in hydrocarbons. So that's an important part very low coefficient of friction and uh, therefore things can slip over it very easily. So some of the things which you could do with wherever you require less friction, they will be very interesting. Density is high, quite high compared to let us say polyethylene, a very high density. Uh, melting temperature also is high, therefore thermal stability is also much, much better compared to let us say polyethylene. So if you compare polyethylene which is similar looking polymer, but because of the fluorine here, a lot of things change. Some of the things which will interest us are these, some of the things which will interest us are this uh, as a textile person or even as a uh, let us say any, any engineering application that you are thinking about. So generally it will be used for various applications. One can do coatings that we talked about. You can do insulation, electrical, thermal sealing, lubrication, bearings, clinical applications, fillers. And so various things happen. So where do we come into picture? We come into picture. Now we will use them to do what we just set out to do, combine the properties of waterproofness as well as comfort. So there is one another variant of this polymer, not the chemistry is not, it is the microstructure which gets changed is called EPTFE, which is called the, which is the expanded PTFE. It is a patented technology as far as the waterproof breathables are concerned. Interestingly, an uncentered PTFE tape is taken and is subjected to stretching either uniaxial or biaxial stretching. And the stretching also at a very high strain rate it could be very high if you do. Temperatures could be also high. You stretch this material and if you have a restraining device which can keep it in the stretched film in a, for a little, little longer period at temperature which may be slightly below the melting point and you keep it for a few seconds, you get a beautiful structure. There is fibrillation and interesting properties that you get. It gets amorphous locked and becomes very open structure if you stretch pretty nicely and allow fibrillation to occur. And 
its density can be as low as this from a high density it's become a low density so what is happening obviously voids are being created by doing this it's a very very interesting way a material which is a polymer can be changed just by a process called uniaxial biaxial stretching at a little higher temperature at a very fast rate that's something which is interesting so there is a very interesting commercial product which is sold as the gortex so the what is the gortex story it has something to do with the eptfe that is expanded polyethylene or poly tetrafluoroethylene okay tetrafluoroethylene so sometime since 1969 gore was experimenting with ptfe so this is some of the phenomena which he noticed which became such an interesting part and what was doing was he found that by rapidly stretching or heat stretching this polymer material stressed and kept on stretching for large percentage instead of breaking or snapping it did not break but kept on stretching because you were getting at a little higher temperature how to heat stretching and also he noticed finally it created a porous structure a porous structure was created that was very interesting so you see some of things do happen almost accidentally and there are very few products which will carry the name of inverter with it like gore tex is the name which is carried of the scientist into to the product itself in the other part of textiles you had the mercerization where john mercer had found something accidentally so you had mercerization so now you have a story which is the gore tex story which has started with this kind of a experiment where it was almost like an accident shall we say but an interesting observation which obviously led to a very new product it was almost like a eureka moment eureka moment you get structure like this see highly highly porous structure highly porous structure everywhere you see fibrils are there so some fibrillation takes place and so you have more air more pores than the material itself therefore the density would go down because it's mostly air now but what is important he could create billions of micropores per square inch very interesting so so many pores were created and it became a very porous structure but micropores each of a size of almost 1 over 20000 of a size of a smallest droplet that you can think of water droplet and therefore the droplet water droplet is of a heavy size a larger size so it cannot penetrate it cannot penetrate but this pore was still 700 times the size of water vapor just a molecule what a vapor so now you have a beautiful situation where the liquid drop cannot pass through but vapor can pass through so this was something which became such an interesting material that it not only 
carried the name of the inventor, but it created a product of a kind which was never seen before. So, porous structure blocked the water, but allowed water vapor to pass through. So, waterproof Yep, because of this and comfort because of this. So, in some sense you had the start of what is called waterproof breathables. So, obviously a patent was there, the patent was by a company, the product was Gore-Tex, carried the name and for a long time they could keep on making the product and never sold the patent because it was so good and they could kept on making money out of this. One of the most important products. So now we have what we sometimes call them a Gore-Tex, but this is a commercial product. Later on other things have also come up, but the concept that PTFE actually could be converted to or fibrillated into so many fibrils with so much of uh, micropores, so many that was one of the important outcomes of this whole thing and therefore this became very commercially successful process. This type of a normal classic Gore-Tex fabrics could withstand 28,000 millimeter of water head, highly, highly water proof, but still allowed vapors to go through comfort. Now the patent now after 20 years obviously uh, the time has passed so other people have started making this before that before that time nobody else could make this product using thing. Now there are a lot of people are making ideas are also different but addition, in addition to they have made a new product which is the XCR. So, this extreme comfort rating which can also withstand very high rate and is very very comfortable. So, you are getting new and newer products, but that is the what we call as a innovation and product and process development, but the first thing was invention this actually in the category of invention. So, one important thing which you will see that once you have stressed the film which was otherwise very flexible film and now it is very light, it is doing the purpose by itself if you keep the film, then there can be problems that it can get torn, you cannot afford that. So, you need to support this film and how do we support? <clears throat> you can have an inner layer or an outer layer in between you have a film which can be laminated and this itself is called the let us say the product, final product which can be sold. And what it happens is the outer layer is going to protect from the thing and it will be exposed the face of the fabric, it may be printed, it may be water repellent, it may be uh, any type of design that you may look a plain woven or a twill or whatever type of thing, any fiber you may like to use polyester, nylon and so on and so forth that you can do. In between you have the laminate which is going to do the function, all right. So, that is going to do the function and the inner layer could be very flexible thing which is maybe nearer to the wearer of the skin for example, it could be a knitted structure or a woven structure. 
So these are important things that one could see that a beautiful product has come out. So the other part of the textile obviously is supporting this film which is very flexible and very performant, performance oriented film. And what is it? Expanded PTFE, film in a laminated conditions being used. So you have a film which is to be laminated. It is not a solution which has to be coated in this case. All right. So many things can happen. You know, it doesn't have to be only, uh, let's say, the film which is water repellent or uh, waterproof or vapor penetration is easy or comfort is more, but you can also have other things. For example, the outer layer could be, let's say, a fabric that we talk about, outer layer, which can be uh, DWR, mean durable water repellent. So you can have, as we said, polyester or nylon type of material and obviously at one stage immediately after that could be a waterproof breathable laminate which could be sandwiched. Then you have an inner layer which can be next to skin but if let us say extreme cold conditions are there where a person has to be for a long, long period, hours together, maybe just staying there itself. Then you may have an insulating layer which would obviously uh, keep, keep the person warm as well. It is not just the moisture alone. So what do we have? We can have a situation that you have an outermost layer which is in some sense water repellent, then you have the breathable layer you can have an insulating layer and you can have the inner layer. Or you can have the insulating layer as another garment worn separately and the waterproof breathable laminated material comes as a separate, uh, let us say, shell garment. So costly, high performance, but it could be used very, very comfortably. But it is costly, therefore, uh, as we said, not many people are manufacturing the basic fabric. The garments, there may be many more companies who are making the garments, but the basic fabrics not many people would be making. Now, let us just go back and see what was there. So if, let us say, the water droplet comes or water comes, so we are hoping that this will be rolled back from the outer surface. But we know if the pressures are more, this water can uh, penetrate because the water penetration resistance of uh, outer layer may not be much, but we would like as much uh, repellency as possible. Something which will pass through to the second layer which is the second layer here which is the breathable layer 
then this drop from here will be resisted, it cannot go inside this. The heat and the moisture that is being created from inside can pass through, it can pass through and go out. So, vapors can go out which are generating next to skin. The generally the water droplets will be repelled, but if the water droplets passes through the top layer, the breathable waterproof layer would not allow it to go through and so it will be pushed out based on the concentration and so on and so forth. So, it cannot go. However, the vapor which are being generated can go out. Okay. This is how things work. Now, if suppose for some reason the innermost layer because of either conditions which are cold generates water droplets. So, there is the inner layer you have the waterproof. So, from outside the water cannot go in, but if suppose the water gets generated inside the liquid drop gets generated inside because temperatures may be very cold and whatever by the time the vapors could go they just condensed and if they condense then they will make liquid droplets. If the liquid droplets cannot come from outside to inside, so obviously you can understand the liquid droplet cannot go from inside to outside also, it could become very, very bad. So, as long as it is not condensed, the vapor will keep on moving out. But if it gets condensed, because the temperature is so low, that is a bad thing then, because now this liquid droplet cannot go out unless it again gets evaporated because of the body heat which we hope will help to again vaporize this. But one thing you must remember, the, the body structure and the skin structure and the sensitivities are such governed, governed in such a manner that if this it is sensed that the skin is wet, it means it the water has not been evaporated and therefore the temperature of the skin may not get cooled and if it does not get cooled then the body reacts and produces more let us say perspiration. For example, in the rainy season when evaporation rates are low, you start perspiring more even if the temperatures are good enough. And so, if condensation takes place that means body is not really been cooled by that way in a sense so it will produce more. So, what is the best way? How do you diffuse? How do you take the moisture out? One was the vapor form. So, if there is a vapor here, it can go out because there are micropores in the structure. Other way of diffusion is liquid which cannot happen from here, but if it becomes a drop then we know it will never be able to go. However, if suppose the surface is slightly hydrophilic on inside, so remember we have one structure which is outer which is finished by water repellent. So, this obviously must be hydrophobic
Okay. As such, everything was repelling water in some sense. Now, if vapor becomes a droplet, it is a bad idea. If suppose this is a hydrophilic surface, so what do we remember from the earlier discussion that we've had? If the surface is hydrophilic, it's got more surface energy. And so, a droplet would start spreading and may become like this. And after that, this moisture which is absorbed can be transmitted through a molecular diffusion, so you can say, slow rate. hoping that the outside is dry or drier more dry so the this moisture can diffuse slowly and go out and the condensation will not be allowed so some of the newer products from all companies may be having a little hydrophilic uh, surface so that the drop is not formed then the diffusion can take place if the drop is formed then it cannot pass through so some new terms were coined like condensation proof products condensation proof water proof breathables So, uh, although Gore-Tex were the leaders, are still probably the leaders in this, there are other companies and other materials have also been used. One of the very important uh, product is Sympatex, which also had understood the importance of uh, the hydrophilic inner surface for condensation proof. I had polyether, polyester type of things. All these things or polyurethane based uh, products, one of them is called the membrane. Now, uh, they are not produced necessarily by the same method of fibrillation. They could be coated, you can create microporous uh, structure by having differentially evaporating solvent using solvent which have different boiling points and as they dry up micropores can be created based on the uh, the molecular weight of the evaporating solvents so two two types of solvent one one has a slightly higher boiling point and the other a slightly lower boiling point and together as they keep on moving more solidification keeps taking place as solidification keeps taking place uh, one can see uh, the other evaporating or wet coagulation is one that one of the solvent uh, you know comes out fast in a wet coagulation system and you can still create beautiful uh, coatings microporous coatings and things can so therefore you can produce today uh, waterproof breathable structures by creating micropores either the fibrillation as a technology or uh, differential boiling point solvent mixtures or by wet coagulation where some of the solvents come out first and then the later the other one. So, coagulation rate is controlled and micropores can be created and that is how uh, you may get structures the, the outer one, the, the main waterproof uh, laminate film or coating and the inner one which could be next to the skin. So, very important uh, product, high performance, high performance product. 
So finally, we say a few things about uh, the measurement and evaluation of breathability. You remember how we uh, evaluated the waterproofness, right? And water repellency both, okay? And now we're looking at the breathability. So breathability obviously means that you must somehow simulate conditions where the water vapors have to pass through if and then then measure what, whatever is happening or create a condition where sweating the way the sweating takes place those type of things can be created simulated and then you can see uh, what what is the effect of your treatment or your product on on this breathability component so one is water vapor permeability. A simple test, a, a cup method which is called. So what you have, there is water here. And you have in, in locked up a fabric sample, let us say this is the fabric, so at, at all temperatures including room temperature whatever conditions that we fix up as the standard, the water will get into the vapor form and the vapor will pass through. So here we have the fabric which is the fabric which is being tested, the test fabric, you put it there so vapor cannot go from anywhere else but they can they have to pass through the uh, fabric, okay, the vapors. And then obviously you can probably have a weighing system. So weight measuring balances and what do you do to say how much weight of or the water has evaporated. So simple expressed as how many grams per meter square per day water has gone out. Obviously you create a condition which is a test conditions, standard test conditions under which you check out how much water actually is evaporating. So based on the water vapor permeability, uh, the amount of water evaporated will be measured. So in general, so what we have initial mass, mass after the transfer of moisture has taken place and simply the area in a meter square and 24 hours is the day and so one can calculate this simple test anybody can do anywhere and so one of the benchmark is for general recreational use if the permeation is of this level is very very comfortable very desirable and things like that. So, different type of activity will define as to what whatever you want. The other standard test for seeing the, the how much moisture can go through a textile is called the guarded hot plate method which is simulating uh, perspiration, it is simulating perspiration. So, many uh, equipment, many different types of equipment may be available which will be doing in principle something similar. So you have a hot plate which is being controlled then there is a reservoir of water. So this is water, it goes through another structure which is the guarded 
पोरस porous structure so water penetrates and goes through then here is the fabric which you want to test and of course it may be uh, covered so that the environment is controlled so it's not that the air is flowing all through because the rate of evaporation Uh, if the air flows through will be different than a standard condition environment so you create those environment so what it does is that you maintain the temperature of this plate let us say at some temperature like this one and if evaporation keeps on taking place evaporation means there is going to be cooling and the equipment is going to keep supplying the energy so that the temperature of the plate remains constant so as evaporation takes place cooling will take place but you keep heating it so that the temperature is remain constant and so this becomes an interesting uh, experiment which is simulating as if you are sweating right the temperatures are near the the skin temperature is not high temperature so that's what is there so some standards have been set up already of measuring uh, this performance is called the ret value which is measured higher lower is the ret value higher will be the breathability let us see uh, some benchmarks so resistance to evaporation of the textile a textile material which is resisting the evaporation this is called the ret values so as we said lower is this value higher is the breathability and so extremely breathable fabrics may have ranges like this uh, uncomfortable non breathable materials may have ret range 30 or more well this is how you can evaluate so there may other methods also and various equipments may be available but in general these are the two principles which people will use to see whether the material is breathable or less breathable more breathable and so on so forth before we uh, end let's say we have some questions which may like to answer if somebody ask this question do the breathable fabric stop the sweating do they stop sweating no what is sweating sweating is basically a way in which the body keeps itself cool maintain this temperature so when you do any activity the moisture is going to come out so it is not going to do that but it will allow permeation of water vapor okay so that moisture near the skin does not condense and is not felt around and so you don't feel wet that's what will do what would be the function of the clothing that you wear under this shell the shell which is the waterproof breathable shell you may want insulation you may want uh, other kind of a soft comfort so that will be the function but this inner garment should obviously allow the vapors developed moisture vapor developed to just get transmitted through this garment and so that it reaches our main garment part main shell which is the uh, breathable waterproof breathable shell so vapor should go out it should not absorb it should not stop otherwise the whole function will say if you wear something like a sheet or a coated material inside 
and then wear something on top of this is useless. But you may have to wear, for example, extreme cold, cold climate, you may have another garment which is, let us say, for insulation purpose, thermal insulation purpose. In that case, this garment should be open enough, obviously, lot of air pockets so that the moisture goes out very easily and then gets transmitted out. Should the cotton clothing be worn as a part of performance clothing? Should cotton clothing inside worn, hmm? should it be? The answer is should not be because it will absorb moisture and you will remain wet and the transport as I say as a molecular transport is very, very slow. It must remain in generally in the vapor form. So, for performance clothing this is not a good idea to wear the next to skin. Some more points to remember in this context. The garments that you make, all the fabric somebody is making, the garment that you make cannot be stitched in the normal way because the stitch is too large, you are puncturing, then the water will pass through. So, you cannot. So, you do sealing with tapes which could be inside the thing. So, this is almost like factory finished garments. If somebody is making a garment, it is factory finished, sealing has to be done in a manner that like the, the garment itself is not or the fabric does not allow water to go in. So, you should not be stitching in a normal way, otherwise there will be punch, punch holes which will obviously allow the water to go through. Invariably, the outer fabrics must have a durable water repellent. Not just because we say well it, it repels is good, but it is good even for maintaining the breathability. So, one nothing will stick to it, the more repellent it is the better for you. We are at the moment talking about water repellency, durable water repellent finishes. Okay? That is okay. That will be there. So, it will improve performance. How will it perform performance? Because if the water gets absorbed and the outer fabrics are wet, then in some sense the water vapor which wants to come out will also have difficulty. It may start getting condensed and so anywhere, somewhere. So, it will inhibit the breathability. Therefore, the outer garments would have a water repellent treatment. The outer surfaces, outer part of the laminate will be repellent. Obviously, with time the, the water repellency can decrease by rubbing or anything because we said mostly it is a surface phenomena, surface treatment, surface finish. But the waterproof inner membranes will almost last the lifetime of the garment. So, because you are you have protected it from all things from the inclement weather and so on and so forth. And the one which is DWR of course, you can give the treatment again if you find that the repellency has reduced that can be uh, post finished also in different ways. So, what have we learned today? So, we have learned that waterproof breathables are high performance fabrics. Okay? Usually, they are laminates made from either expanded PTFE or copolymer films or coatings of the polyether, polyester based copolymers or poly polyurethane itself. Polyurethane you know is also a very soft polymer. You can make it a soft polymer. So, they are very soft. Breathe can, breathability can be evaluated by cup method or sweat plate method. So, that is what we have learned today. Uh, next time we will talk about repellency, not just water, but of the soil repellency, which could be oils and other solvents 
And of course, if something gets soiled, how do we ensure that the soil is released from the textile surface? This is what we'll do uh, next time. Till then, have fun, enjoy. See you. Thank you.